What's up guys and welcome back to another video on the finals. Don't go anywhere because today is going to be a quick one. As you can see on the screen we've got the update 2.1.0 that's actually been released already and um, the good news is that unlike the last one it's going to be a bit faster to run through. So I was thinking maybe let's discover it together. I haven't checked anything. I did hear some rumors uh, regarding some of the weapons that have been updated so we'll get into that in just a few minutes but I thought it would be interesting to start by running through the trailer together. So let's see what Embark has cooked for us this week. All right, so nice and easy this week. Funny little uh, theme they've got there running. I think it's something of an office type theme. When I saw the post-its on the F car and the shield made out of cardboard or something that, I don't know, that looks pretty interesting. We'll see how it looks in the game, but let's run through the patch notes themselves. As I said, don't run anywhere. They're quite short this week. So we should be able to do this in just a couple of minutes. So let's get into it. Bug fixes and additions, private matches. So I heard they did tweak and start updating uh, the, the private matches match functionality. Players can now select the map when starting a private match. Players will no longer be stuck trying to join the game server after leaving a private lobby. Fixed an issue where party members with different crossplays settings could be enabled to leave private match lobbies and fixed a bug where players could bypass the crossplay on requirements for private matches which resulted in a soft lock. Good, um, as they said on the initial 2.0 release, they're gonna keep working on the private matches this season to make it more up to par to what we could be expecting. I'm still a bit disappointed that we can't add more than six players to, to private matches, but I'm guessing that's gonna be down the line. Anyway, moving on regarding console crash fix for audio related crash. Sorry guys, I am not on consoles. I'm not up to par with regarding bugs on consoles, but I guess that's a good one. Then moving on, power shift for Monaco, fixed jump pads, clipping the streets on low, medium, high settings, added a short zip line to the closed alleyway next to the cathedral to make traversal smoother and polished placement and orientation at spawn points. I think that's really important, especially that point because the spawn points are still not completely fixed. I know they said they did change them. It is better, but I've still had already in, in just what, like we've been playing for 40 to 50 hours this season. I've already had a few experiences where you just respawn in front of the enemy or the enemy re easily guesses where you're going to be spawning from. I've had one where I literally spawned and got a glitch grenade in my face. So let's let's hope they keep working on that. And Skyway Stadium added jump pad outside the construction spawn area and tweaked spawns to sit less close to edges. Great. And general fixed objective count score in the summary screen. Okay, those are UI type changes, why not? Then moving to the map section, performance and polish on Sys Horizon. Quite shadowy type of upgrade. I don't really know what they mean by performance and polish. I'm guessing maybe we had some RAM issues because of the new skin textures in the map, something like this. So this is probably gonna make things a little smoother, even though personally speaking, I did feel like things were already quite smooth, but um, I guess they know what they're doing better than me. Then adjusted collision on ceiling blocker to prevent players from getting stuck above the library when using the gateway gadget in Sys Horizon, moved a spawn location in the corner of Monaco near the hotels that was creating imbalanced scenarios in some game modes. That actually might be what I was referring to. So that's that's good to hear. We'll see how it goes in the game. And then fixed incorrect destruction effect on trees, fixed missing destruction effect on concrete fences, and fixed missing destruction effects in multiple assets in the tutorial. Good. Um, I've had a bug actually on Sys Horizon that you can see in my last released video of last week. There was two bugs exactly. One was coming from the demon materializer once like you remove the ceiling you could still not shoot through it even though there was a gaping hole in the wall and the same happened with a full destruction part of the ceiling and you can see that we're, we're trying to shoot through it uh, towards an enemy and the bullets just collide with with the uh, unexisting wall so hopefully that's what they're referring to then for the weapons and gadgets section fixed bug with inconsistent damage when multiple explosives were triggered at the same time by c-force and breaching charges as opposed to multiplied melee damage hey okay, good fixed an issue that made recoil on burst weapons not behave as intended fixed gateway ammo not being properly refunded when being thrown into an APS fixed hovering objects after transmutation, blocked transmutation on friendly carryables, improved zipline behavior to better match the intended exit points and direction of the player, improved the dematerializer ability to dematerialize rematerialized objects when multiple objects are close to each other. I think that's very important. For those of you who follow my streams, yesterday we were on, on Monaco. Um, I used the dematerializer on the church 
um, to get access to the to the cash out and then wasn't able to actually close it because if you checked properly and which I did once I was dead you can see that just a little piece of the cash out box is sticking out uh, towards the wall and that's basically like stopping you from rematerializing the wall which made it impossible to defend the point so that's something that's pretty important and also here so they say fixed gateway ammo fine i'm more worried about the current bug we have with the aps and the dematerializer where you can kind of like push the D the aps into the wall itself and then you cannot it cannot be destroyed which is very frustrating so i hope they they know this is happening and that we'll see it next week and then remove the ability to equip the mesh shield during defib revive this too was very annoying i'm a little worried this is limited to the ability for the mesh shield because you could also include jump pads so basically once you were dead and being revived you could already start using your gadgets which was very disturbing the most annoying was definitely the mesh shield so that's great they removed it but i hope they will apply the the, the changes to every single gadget there then art updated the shoulder length hairstyles to avoid clipping fixed oversight or rf sweater to prevent the slaves from blocking ads fine ui ux social syncs will not be excluded if a user is already logged in fix the bug that will cause carryable objects to weigh more if they had an active ping marker attached to them fixed incorrect text on certain contracts fix overflowing text in item tutorial videos okay audio fix seek to start time not working and corrected the audio for the season vignette video right and then the most important and critical updates of this patch is the weapons so SA1216 has been decreased fire rate from 230 rounds per minute to 200 rpm and decreased damage per pellet from 7 to 6 I'm not gonna lie this is very happily received on my side at least personally I hope you guys feel the same way as it stood I think the the, the shotgun for the heavy build was just completely overpowered I hope this is gonna reduce it while not completely destroying the weapon because that would just feel unfair. I mean, the, the heavy build has seen some quite heavy nerfs uh, over patch two as a whole. This is happy to hear, but let's see how it feels in the game. I just, I, I don't want heavy builds to be completely removed from the meta, but this gun right now was just completely crazy. So this, this is very good to see. And then the gadgets, another important one that I've heard about, glitch grenades, change glitch grenades to trigger on impact when they hit mesh shields and dome shields. On other surfaces, they will still bounce. And glitch traps, same thing. Change glitch traps to trigger on impact when they hit mesh shields and dome shields. This is really good because as it was a little weird, uh, I think especially for those using it, to have to calculate the rebound of the shields and making it quite difficult to actually hit the heavy uh, and their shields, which to my point of view is probably the main target of the glitch grenades or glitch traps. So so this is again a very good buff for the, for the light class. And then security, improved prevention and detection, added ban progression with a three strike system i'm curious to see how that's going to work i'm not always a fan of a three strike system because that, that can be lacking a bit of flexibility but at least it is what it is we need some improvements on the cheat side of things so yeah that was the entire patch notes i hope you'll be happy to hear what they updated and i think we can always thank embark for their efficiency doing their one week updates every time is, is always quite impressive so we will test the patch notes tonight at 10 p.m cet as per usual on the stream on youtube and on twitch don't hesitate to join us if you're interested i will see you on the next one